Bruce, as a screen tough guy, you don't have to suffer what all movie heroes suffered. Challengers and exhibitionists and nuts asking you to fight, challenging you to fight. It's already begun to happen, hasn't it? Yes, it has. How do you deal with it? When I first learned martial arts, I too have challenged many established instructors. And of course, some other challenging me also. But what I have learned is that challenging means one thing. Is that what is your reaction to it? How does it get? Now, if you are secure within yourself, you treat it very, very, very light because you ask yourself, am I really afraid of that man? Or is that man, do I have any doubt within me that he's going to get me? But if I do not have such doubt, and if I do not have such fear, I would certainly treat it very lightly, just as today the rain is going on strong, but tomorrow maybe the sun is going to come out again. I mean, it's like that type of a thing. Of course, they can't lose by challenging you. Even if they lose, they get the publicity of, of being a guy who actually fought. Well, let's face it. I mean, in Hong Kong, can you have a fight? I mean, a no hold bar fight. Is it, is it a legal thing? It isn't, is it? And to me, you see, a lot of things, I mean, you know, like challenging and all that. It's, I am the last to know. I am always the last to know, man. I mean, I always find out from newspapers, from reporters, before I personally realize what the hell is happening. Bruce, you were teaching martial arts in the States, and yes. two, of your, two of your students were Steve McQueen and James Coburn. Did you find them uh, tough people, the way they're portrayed on the, on the screen? Well, first of all, James Coburn definitely is not a fighter. Lover, yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's really a super nice guy. Uh, I mean, not only that, he's a very peaceful man. He learned martial arts because he finds that it is a very, very, it is like a mirror to reflect himself. You know what I mean? I mean, like, I personally believe that all type of knowledge, I don't care what it is, ultimately means self-knowledge. And that's what he is after. Now, Steve, Steve is very uptight. Steve is very high strung, you know. Now, Steve, he can be a very good martial artist. But I hope that martial art would cool him down a little bit, maybe make him a little bit more mellow and uh, be more peaceful, like Jim. <laughs> Did it achieve that, his time with you? Did you feel that uh, perhaps he, he learned something from you? Uh, no, definitely not yet. First, because of shooting schedule and all that, I mean, he cannot have it on a regular basis. And secondly, he is still on the level right now of enjoying it as an excitement, like his motorcycle and his sports car, you know, some for release of his whatever, anger, whatever you name it. Bruce, uh, how much of your screen personality is really you? I mean, you teach martial arts, so you're obviously very good at it. But of course, teachers are not always the best exponents or practitioners. Right. Are you able to take care of yourself, what do you say? I will ask, I will answer it first of all with a joke, if you don't mind. Oftentimes people come up and say, hey Bruce, are you really that good? I said, well, if I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> but, all right, going back to the truthful with you. Let's just put it this way. I have no fear of opponent in front of me. That I am very self-sufficient. That they do not bother me. And that should I fight? Should I do anything? I have made up my mind and that's it, baby. You better kill me before. Bruce, in The Big Boss, you play a man who's very slow to anger. Yes. He's shy, diffident. Uh, you even stay out of fights in the early scenes because of a promise you made to your mother. Yes. Um, is that a little bit like you, or is this just a screen personality? Uh, this is 
definitely a screen personality because uh, as a person, one thing that I have definitely learned and, and my life, it seems like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a life of self-examination and self-peeling of my self bit by bit, day by day, is that I do have a bad temper, <laughs> a violent temper, in fact. <laughs> uh, so that is definitely, I um, mean, some people that I am portraying, you know, not Bruce Lee as he is. Well, as well as being an exceptionally successful film in terms of finance, um, it grossed more than any other pictures ever done in Hong Kong. The Big Boss does show some very explicit sex scenes, doesn't it? What's your reaction to being in bed with a lovely young movie star in front of the whole studio crew? Does it uh, intimidate you? Does it worry you at all? Well, it certainly would not intimidate me, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, it's all right, as long as the script justifies it. But I definitely do not agree to put something in there just for the heck of it because it is an exploitation. You know, like, for instance, when I start shooting the big ball, the first question was asked, hey man, how many thousands of feet of film, or films, my English is getting terrible now, <laughs> uh, is it going to be? My reaction is that, first of all, why do I start fighting? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, motivation. I mean, oh, definitely. I mean, you yeah. see, but it seems like to be the thing now that they, they go for blood, sex, just merely for the sake of sex and merely for the sake of blood. May I ask you a question that's been puzzling oh, me since, since I saw the film? Yeah. Um, at the stage where you decide you're going to get revenge, and yes. it's obviously leading up to the climax, right. you suddenly decide to go off and make love to a right. girlfriend in a bordello. Yeah. What's the motivation for that? Now, the way I look at that, you know, it, it, that was a suggestion of the uh, director. And I, I accept it in such a way, and that is him being a very simple man, when all of a sudden he, you know, he made up his mind that he's going to go and either die, either kill or be killed, right? So he walked past by, it's a kind of a sudden thing of human being that a thought just occurred, well, doggone it, man, such is the basic need of a human being. I might as well enjoy it, man, before I kick the bucket, you know, like that type of an attitude. I mean, it's a, you cannot say it's a, it, it, it's just an occurring, you know. I think you'd probably agree, Bruce, that yeah. the thing that's limited the, the appeal of Chinese films to Western audiences is that it's very unusual to find a Chinese actor who can act. And when I say that, I, I mean act in the Western style in a yeah. manner that, uh, would make non-Chinese pay money to see them. Uh, you seem to have crossed that barrier. How do you think you've achieved it? Uh, do you think it has to do with your time in the United States? Oh, yeah. You studied there, didn't you? Yes, it definitely has. You know, because uh, when I first arrived there, you know, I did the Green Hornet, you know, television series back in '65, and as I look around, man, I mean, I saw a lot of human being. And as I look at myself, I was the only robot there because I was not being myself and I'm trying to accumulate external security, external uh, technique, or, or the way to move my arm, the way, but never to ask and say what Bruce Lee would have done if, the word if such a thing happened to me. When I look around, I always learn something and that is to be always yourself and to express yourself, to have faith in yourself. Do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate him. Now, that seems to me that that is the prevalent thing happening in Hong Kong. Like they always copy mannerism, but they never start from the very root of his being, and that is, how can I be me? I mean, you see, I never believed the word star. That's an illusion, man. I mean, that's something public calls you. Do you see? And when you become successful, when you become famous, it's very, very easy to be blinded by all these happening. Everybody come up to you with Mr. Lee. When you have long hair, they will say, hey, man, like, that's in, man, baby. That's the in thing. But if you have no name, they will say, oh, look at that thing. Disgusting juvenile delinquent. Mm. I mean, 
too many people are yes, yes, yes to you all the time, you see. So unless you really at that time have gone through quite a lot and understand what life is about and that right now, man, some game is happening and realizing such that that is a game, fine and dandy, then it's all right. But most people tend to be blinded by it because, well, I mean, if things are repeated too many times, you believe in it and it becomes a habit. The danger is, is, is believing the, the public impression of yours. Right, man. Uh, your father warned you about the bad things in show business. Yeah. Have you met them too? Oh, Apart from the illusion. Not called. Not called. You seem to have come out of it remarkably well. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, to be honest and all that, I am not as bad as some of them. But I definitely am not saying that I am a saint. <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, could we go back to the fighting? Because yeah. like it or not, it's the thing that um, you're mainly identified with yeah. at this moment. You know, a number of styles of fighting, the karate, judo, Chinese boxing. Yeah. And it's a question you must have been asked hundreds of times before. Yeah. Which do you think is the most effective? You see, um, my answer to that is this. There is no such thing as an effective segment of a totality. By that I mean, I personally do not believe in the word style. Why? Because unless there are human beings with three arms and four legs, unless we have other group of beings on earth that are structurally different from us, then there might be a different style of fight. Now, why is that? Because we have two hands and two legs now. The important thing is how can we use it to the maximum in term of path? Well, straight line, curved line, uh, 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 round lines, they might be slow, but depending on the circumstances, sometimes that might not be slow. And in term of legs, you can kick up straight, same thing, right? Physically, how can I be very so well coordinated? That means you have to be an athlete. That means you got to have jogging and all this basic in ingredient, right? Now, and after all that, then you ask yourself, how can you honestly express yourself at that moment? And being yourself, when you punch, you really want to punch. Not you want to punch because trying to avoid not getting hit but to really be in with it and express yourself. Now that is the out, that is to me the most important thing and that is how can I in the process of learning how to use my body to understand myself. Now the unfortunate thing is now there's boxing which you can, judo which is throwing. Now I'm not putting them down mind you but I'm saying one thing that is the bad thing and that is because of style people are separating. They are not united together because styles became long. But the original founder of the style started out with hypotheses. But now it has become the gospel truth. People that go into it, man, became the product. It doesn't matter how you are, who you are, how you are structured, how you are built, how you are made. It doesn't matter. You just go in there and be that product. And that to me is not right. Bruce Lee, thank you. Ted, I thank you, man.